members of the board, members of the community, good evening. Uh, tonight we are excited to honor amazing staff members and valued community health partners. Leading tonight's celebration is Executive Director of Communications, Ms. Madeline Noblin. All right, thank you, Superintendent Kingsley, members of the board and cabinet, and everyone here this evening. Uh, you've heard me say it, and I will say it again, this is one of our favorite parts of the meeting, being able to honor our incredible students, staff, and community partners. This evening, I would like to um, welcome up first uh, Superintendent Kingsley and Director Anderson, who will be presenting this recognition, along with my colleague Beth Higgins and uh, our partners from the Health and Wellness Center at Lincoln Middle School. As they're making their way here to the lectern, um, I would just make a note that we've made a very uh, intentional decision to recognize a community partner at each of our board recognitions. There are so many nonprofits, businesses, and individuals throughout our community who help our students and our families and our staff every day. And we want to make sure that those partnerships are visible and celebrated so that people know the contributions that these folks are making to improve PSD alongside the rest of us. So with that, I will go ahead and turn this over to my colleague Beth to do introductions. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Madeline. Good evening, members of the board, Superintendent Kingsley, members of cabinet and our community. It is always a great honor for me to stand here and talk about the amazing partners we have at PSD, and tonight is no different. Tonight we are celebrating and recognizing Every Child Pediatrics and the staff and volunteers of the Health and Wellness Centers at Centennial High and soon Lincoln Middle School. Joining us this evening are, you guys can come. You can actually like come join us. There you go. <laughs> Joining us this evening is Mary Hummel, Director of Every Child Pediatrics Health and Wellness Center, Thea Milliken, Certified Physician's Assistant, Alyssa Esposito, Licensed Social Worker, and Dr. Elizabeth Aaron, who serves on the Advisory Committee and as the Volunteer Medical Director. For nearly 30 years, licensed clinical professionals at the Health and Wellness Center at Centennial High School have provided integrated and comprehensive medical and mental health services to PSD students enrolled in the program. The center is part of a nationally recognized school-based health center model, and we're among 3,000 such uh, models across the United States. Operated by Every Child Pediatrics, a Denver-based nonprofit pediatric organization, all health and wellness center staff are part of Every Child Pediatrics network of medical and mental health professionals. Services for students include annual well child exams, um, oh, excuse me, sports physicals, management of chronic health conditions, acute medical conditions, dental screening in partnership with Project SMILE, mental health supports, and much, much more. The Health and Wellness Center accepts most insurance, including Medicaid and CHP Plus, and offers a, flighting, a sliding fee scale. But perhaps most importantly, no child enrolled in the program is ever denied services because of their inability to pay. In 2019, the Health and Wellness Center and PSD launched an expansion of the services to Lincoln Middle School. The uh, Lincoln Middle School site is scheduled to open later this month. It's been a long process. But we're very excited about that. Next week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> These centers are vital to student success even more now than ever before. We have an unprecedented number of families experiencing financial challenges, and we recognize the importance of access to physical and mental health services. The Centennial and Lincoln Centers help keep our kids healthy, stable, supported, and ready to learn. So we thank the staff and the volunteers of the Health and Wellness Center, and I'm going to now welcome Mary Hummel to talk a little bit more about what they do. Mm -hmm. right, Beth and I didn't coordinate, so I'm going to have some repeat here a little bit. <laughs> so on behalf um, of myself, Health and Wellness Center staff, and this is just part of us, our entire Health Advisory Committee, and the students we serve, I want to thank you for this evening's recognition. Uh, my name is Mary Hummel. I'm the director of the Health and Wellness Centers, and these are part of my staff and part of the Health Advisory Committee. So as Beth said, there's 3,000 school-based health centers across the United States, and I'm proud to state that the Health and Wellness Center at Lincoln Middle School 
will be the 70th site in the state of Colorado and the second in Poudre School District. School-based healthcare lives at the intersection of education and health. Our goal is to create healthy learners better prepared for academic and life success. We do this through a model that focuses on prevention and being integrated and comprehensive, providing pediatric and adolescent medical and mental health care to those who have the highest need and the highest barriers to accessing this care. We meet kids' health needs where they spend a vast majority of their time in school. We provide in-person and virtual care services to any PSD student who enrolls for our care. Research definitively shows that SBH schools increase school connectivity, reduce absenteeism, and dramatically reduce lost learning time and improve graduation rates. What's not to love about that? Developing and operating these centers takes solid partnerships and committed relationships. So we'd like to thank Every Child Pediatrics, who is our employer and the sponsor of the two sites in Poudre School District, Obviously, the superintendent, the Board of Education, PSD staff, including but certainly not limited to Assistant Superintendent Scott Nielsen, Director of Student Services Ruben Chacon, Principals Mike Roberts at Centennial High School and Penny Styers at Lincoln Middle School, and in Penny's transition to being the interim um, principal over at Fort Collins, now Mr. Mack and Mr. Thompson. We'd like to thank each of our health committee members, past and present, our generous capital funders, including the Colorado Health Foundation, Larimer County Behavioral Health Services, Bohemian Foundation, and the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, the Fort Collins community, and most importantly, the PSD students and families who need, want, and utilize our services. Much like the National Reduced Free, Free and Reduced Lunch Program was created to feed hungry kids, school-based health centers address the physical and mental needs of children and adolescents. We know that a hungry child has difficulty learning. So does a child that has a dental condition, a child with anxiety, a child with stomach aches. When kids thrive, families thrive. When families thrive, communities thrive. We want to thank you for your leadership and support of one of the oldest school-based health centers in Colorado, the Health and Wellness Center at Centennial High, and the newest school-based health center, the Health and Wellness at Lincoln Middle School. We look forward to our continued collaboration to meet the needs of PSD students. Thank you. All right, with that, we will transition to a staff recognition. Um, I would like to welcome at this time, my colleagues, uh, Joe Horky, Bacon Elementary School's principal, as well as Kale Wicker, who was recently awarded the 2022 Colorado Assistant Elementary School Principal of the Year. And uh, Mr. Wicker is now at Beatty, but worked previously at Bacon. And with that, I will go ahead and give Joe the floor so that he can brag on Mr. Wicker and his recent accomplishment. Thank you, Madeline. Superintendent Kingsley and the Board of Education, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the 2022 Colorado Assistant Principal of the Year, Mr. Kale Wicker. During Kale's five and a half years as of service at Bacon Elementary, I was able to see firsthand why he is so deserving of this recognition. As I shared in my recommendation letter for Kale, his greatest impact on staff and students at Bacon was his presence, visibility, laser-focused attention to detail, and genuine caring personality. Since he joined the administrative team at Beatty Elementary last month, we needed to convert our office space, or conference room space, to an assistant principal office, as during his time at Bacon, he felt his time was best spent in the building and in classrooms rather than sitting behind a desk. Congratulations, my friend. I'm honored to have you as a friend. I'm honored to have worked with you, 
and proud of the work that you did to make it count for all learners at Bacon. I don't know how close I should get to the mic. So um, I just wanted to take a quick moment, because I know you have a loaded docket tonight, um, to thank the Colorado Association of School Executives who um, has given me this award. Uh, Joe and the team of teachers at Bacon Elementary who nominated me um, and saw the hard work uh, and efforts that I put into striving to make it count for all learners, the mantra at Bacon. Um, I, I also wanted to thank PSD and the many departments that have invested in me and given me the skills um, that I've been able to demonstrate at Bacon. Um, and also just uh, excited to continue the work in advocating for the role of assistant principals. I think everybody in the room, um, if you, you have a kid uh, connected um, to you and you know how public education changes and you need a support system and an administrative team and that role of assistant principal at an elementary school is really important. Um, so I look forward to continuing to advocate for that role here and uh, in the state of Colorado. So thank you. And I just want to say on behalf of the board, thank you so much for sharing your talents and your love with our students. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Our next group will be from uh, a group of students and staff who recently went to the 2022 Colorado Music Educators Association, a very large event down in Colorado Springs. I believe they are still headed this way. They were coming over from the other building. I heard some laughter outside, so I think they will be here shortly. So we'll take a brief moment as they come into the room here. Yes. I will not sing. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We'll let them go ahead and um, line up here. We've got quite a big group, an amazing, talented group of folks who have joined us tonight. All right. Welcome, everyone. As I said, this is a, an incredibly music group. Uh, who went and represented Poudre School District in Colorado Springs at the Colorado Music Educators Association. With us tonight, uh, my colleague Melissa Flail, our music curriculum coordinator, and I would like to invite her up. She is going to introduce each of the groups. We have multiple groups here representing different um, ensembles and choirs and orchestras. Um, and then uh, we may hear a few words from teachers representing those groups, but we have students, teachers, and staff here tonight. So let's give them all a round of applause. One group I'd like to mention before Melissa gets started uh, is from Bolts Middle School, the symphonic band led by teacher Fong Nguyen. They weren't able to make it tonight, um, but we want to make sure to recognize them and all that they did as well. All right, Melissa, take it away. Good evening. Um, as Madeline said, my name is Melissa Flail, and I'm the music curriculum facilitator for the district. I also teach halftime at an elementary school. And I want to just begin by thanking everyone, everyone in our community, everyone on the school board, everyone in district leadership, Superintendent Kingsley, for your support of music and the arts. Um, music has had some unique struggles throughout the pandemic um, for various reasons and there are districts that did not allow music to happen last school year and our district even though it was challenging made it possible for us to do it in a way that seemed safe at the time and and did turn out not to have any real dangerous effects so um, always i think our board and our leadership for their support of music our district has always had a great history of that but especially through this pandemic, I'm very, very grateful and I wanna make sure to begin with that, so thank you. Um, the CMEA Conference, Colorado Music Educators Association Clinic and Conference 
happens every year at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs. Last year's was virtual, so we haven't done this in a couple of years. Um, but it is always a huge honor to be selected to perform at the conference. And our district is always very well represented, anywhere usually from four to eight groups is typical, um, which is not typical for most any other district. So it's really a tribute to the work of our teachers and our students um, and just the dedication that we have here in our district to excellence in the performing arts. This year in particular, it's an honor because it was a short timeline. These teachers got back to school. Normally recordings for auditions are submitted in the spring and then they found out over the summer that they're going. They have all fall to prepare their performance. This year they submitted November 5th. They found it just before winter break and they got their performances ready for the end of January. So it's been a real whirlwind. Um, before I forget, I wanna thank our communications department as well, board members and Superintendent Kings have this beautiful program that their department helped us with, particularly Brad Randall. And so we are, we're grateful for that as well. Um, so I want to begin with a collaboration. That's one amazing thing that has come out of this pandemic is that though our numbers have been down a little bit, we have had some great collaborations between schools. And so I would like to call up Jean Johnson from Preston and Scott Wheeler from Kennard, both middle schools. And they had a treble choir collaboration called Perfect Angelique, representing both of their school mascots. And they combined their schools. They're close enough together that they can walk to each other's schools. Um, they took that group to CMEA and as always had an amazing performance. And so I wanna congratulate them and thank them for their work. <laughs> um, next, I'd like to call up Mallory Wilson from Bolts Middle School. Her um, ensemble, Embers 8 Choir, represented Bolts. Um, I've known Mallory um, in a, a, a lot of different ways for a long time. Mallory was an elementary school teacher for a long time. She was a lifeguard at the pool we went to, and my daughter was very, very small and taught her to swim. <laughs> so a lot of community connections. About a few years ago, Mallory moved up to the middle school level and has really done an amazing job building that vocal program there at Bolts um, back to where it had once been. So congratulations, Mallory, and thank you for bringing your group to represent our district. Next, I'd like to call up John Hermanson, the director of the Fort Collins High School Symphony Orchestra. Um, John has had groups perform at a number of honor events, um, nationally even, um, and his group of teachers and students at Fort Collins High School travels internationally as well when the pandemic allows or prior to the pandemic. And so um, John is an amazing teacher. He's an amazing colleague, um, really, really works hard for his students and the excellence that they show really um, bears that out. And I do believe that John would like to say just a quick word. I just wanted to echo what Melissa had said in terms of uh, the district support for music education and how important that is. We all know that students thrive best when they're connected to school and music, athletics, those kinds of things are where they get those connections. Um, and I experience that on a pretty regular basis. Uh, this is just the culmination of that experience for students. And we're grateful that you've allowed that to happen and that you continue to support the arts. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody in this room for uh, your continuing support. Thank you. And our last teacher here today, and then we will be having students representing groups. Our last teacher here today is Lani Obluda. She's the orchestra director at Lesher Middle School. Um, she's done quite a bit of work with the band there as well. She's very talented as a music educator and as a photographer um, <laughs> and a lot of other things. Um, 
you know, I know those details aren't always relevant, but it means a lot to me that I'm able to know these things about our teachers and my colleagues. And so um, I do like to share those whenever I can. I'm getting a little emotional here. <laughs> so we have such a great group of music educators here. But I do want to focus on Lonnie. This is um, Lesher Middle School Advanced Chamber Orchestra was chosen to perform at the conference. Lonnie also works in some of our state leadership. So she was really busy during the <laughs> concert, um, running some sessions as well. Um, but her orchestra that was selected is made up of seventh and eighth grade students who meet before school and do these things on their own time, not as a class. And so that's extra time that Lonnie puts in, but also time that the students put in and you know, getting up early in the morning. I actually taught at Lesher early in my career and uh, I had a chamber choir in the same situation. And so that I know that it is, it is a challenge and it's a sacrifice, but the students work so hard and that's a testament to Lonnie and her excellence. And Lonnie would also like to say <laughs> a word or two. I just want to say um, how grateful I am for Melissa Flail and all the ways that she advocates for the arts, um, the performing arts here in our district. And I want to say a special thank you to the board and to our superintendents um, and Lesher admin. But as you all know, my job would not be possible without the community members and our amazing students. And so to the Lesher families, I love you all very, very much. I'm very grateful for all of you. Um, we have a lot of differences that are popping up in our culture these days. Performing arts is a great equalizer for all of us. And so the more you can get your students plugged in to those things that connect them, like John was saying, the better off all of our hearts will be. So thank you all. Um, our other teacher directors could not be here tonight because, as you might imagine, they are very busy with concerts. So there's a concert at Rocky Mountain High School tonight and some other things going on. So we have students representing um, the rest of our groups. And I'd like to call up students from both Rocky Mountain High School and Fort Collins High School together. Um, this is another collaboration that occurred out of the desire for connection through the pandemic. So we have students Maya Armstrong and Erica Bomer representing Rocky Mountain High School's One Voice Choir. Their teacher, Chris Thompson, um, is not able to be here because of that concert. Um, in, in fact, the, co the choir that they are part of at Rocky is called Prima Voce, but their collaboration was called One Voice. Um, and then we have Emily Yoder and Ali Steen from Fort Collins High School's Cantabella. And they joined together, they rehearsed, and really um, it was the student's idea. So if you've read the recent article about our CMEA performances on the website and in the district newsletters, um, a section about their collaboration was used in part of that article. So you will, um, you will have a little background about how the students were the impetus behind that collaboration. And their teachers, Chris Thompson and Caitlin Miles, were quite delighted to go along and, and really valued the experience. And I know they had an amazing performance and they've made some great friendships. And so we wanna congratulate them um, for Fort Collins High School and Rocky Mountain High School One Voice Choir. And that right there is why Brian Kingsley is an amazing superintendent. You see, he, he is still a, a teacher and he still has connections with students right now, standing in front of us. Um, so last but not least, we have some students, Ryan Woodall and Aiden Palermo from Rocky Mountain High School. They are representing both Rocky Mountain Winds, which is a band, and Rocky Mountain High School Singers, which is a choir, of course. Rocky Mountain High School has a really amazing way of involving students in music opportunities, especially when they want to be in multiple ensembles. They're on a traditional block schedule, um, but they have been able to have students move back and forth between shorter ensemble rehearsals so that students can be in both band and choir in a schedule where they only have four classes per semester. So um, these students represent uh, Elizabeth Hoeiler, who is the choir director of that group, and Scott Schlepp, who is the band teacher. And um, I know that they really 
do a fabulous job with their students. Um, Scott actually worked with me at Lesher when I was there, and Elizabeth took my place at Lesher when I left. So we have so many connections and, and so many great teachers. Um, but I know that both of these ensembles had really successful performances at CMEA. And so thank you for being here to represent both of them and your amazing teachers. I want to recognize one other uh, person who is the superintendent for secondary schools, Scott Nielsen. He's been a great support to these groups. These are all secondary groups, as you heard, and he traveled to CMEA to hear them as well. Um, so, Scott, thank you for your support and for being there for us. And finally, I just, I do want to thank any music teachers out there who might be watching. Um, not only these directors, but all of the music teachers make our music program what it is. The elementary teachers who instill that first seed of love for music all the way on up. So um, for anyone listening or, you know, for those of you who have a music teacher at school, give your music teacher a, a little thank you and a lot of love. Um, it's been a hard little while for us um, with a lot of extra precautions, but we have still been able to really maintain a lot of the joy of music and, and we're looking forward to continuing that for a long time. So thank you all once again. Thank you.